What do the Packers need in the draft? Everything! Crossy Posse Packers Nation, welcome to another episode of Podcast, the podcast for everyone to be a Packers fan, but it sure does help. I'm your host, Tom Grossi, and today we're going to take a look at one of the questions that consistently gets asked to me in every live stream, all the DMs that you're slipping in waking your way into about Tom what do the Packers need to address in the draft Tom which players do you think they're gonna get in the draft Tom do we need a pass rusher Tom do we need a safety Tom do we need a tight end and what is Le'Veon Bell coming to the team the answer to that last question is never Le'Veon Bell is not gonna become a Packer get over it it's not gonna happen it makes no financial sense stop asking me that question stop asking me but the other questions I'll allow it. And we'll talk about it today as I decided to break it down into the top five. Because lists are fun, and five is a pretty frequent number that you see in lists of things. And so we are going to take a look at the top five positions that the Green Bay Packers need to address in the draft. Starting off with missionary. <laughs> But besides that, let's actually get down into it. Starting with numero cinque, that is five for our Italian-speaking friends. That's right, Spanish people. You had too much time. I was giving you a dose. I was giving you a trace. Now let's let the Italians get their turn. I don't know any other languages, so after that, it's just going to be English from here on out. But starting with number five, good old inside line backer. And now you might be thinking, but We got so many people. We got Blake Martinez, who, again, I think he's a great player. I think every time that he rushes the quarterback, he has a chance to get a sack. I think, uh, hello, excuse me. Oh, yeah, all leading sack. Oh, yeah, excuse me, uh, was our tackling leader back in 2017. Took a little bit of a step down in 2018. But, again, I think he's got lots of potential. But that being said, after Martinez, you have Morrison, who has looked okay. He's looked all right. I know some of you are just like, oh, my God, I love Morrison. And some of you are like, who's Morrison? But, yeah, Morrison, he's had a pretty good season. But, again, nothing spectacular. You have Oren Burks. The hell's going on with that? Nobody knows. And then you got Crawford. Yeah, that's right. Some of you don't even know who Crawford is. I barely know who Crawford is. The point being is that we need an inside linebacker uh, to, first of all, (laughs) shore up that run game because other than that you just have good old jake ryan who every time he speaks sounds like he just ate a bowl of cocoa pebbles so yeah uh i really don't have too much faith there while i like martinez we really need some depth uh and actually some skill at that position in that i think you you need a a solid guy to be able to stop the run we did miss jake ryan in the uh the runs defense this year uh even though god in pass coverage he's just so so bad Uh, But, yeah, I mean, we've even talked about moving, or they have. They've moved Clay Matthews there before, and then he can't get to the quarterback. And then this year he gets to the quarterback three and a half times, and the majority of the times it's just roughing the passer. But, you know, there's that. So, yeah, Clay Matthews most likely not going to be on the team, but I would love to see an inside linebacker get picked up. But uh, when it comes to the list of priorities, he's pretty far. They're pretty far down on the list. Uh, And by far down, I mean, you know, bottom of the five because, again, there's other pressing needs. But the fact that I just identified so many holes with our inside linebackers core, and that's on the bottom of the list, (laughs) that's a problem. Moving on to number four, 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 four. And that's good old tight end. I know some of you might be thinking we need it even, it needs to be higher on the list, but please let me explain. Right now we have four signed on the roster, which is most likely not going to be the case next year. Uh, But we have good old big Bob Tanyan, who, you know, in that one catch did real good with that touchdown in the Seattle game. We have Mercedes Lewis, who nobody knows how to use. Maybe in Matt LaFleur's offense, we'll learn how to use him, but probably not. Uh, Lance Kendricks, who was the most useful he's ever been uh, this past season. And good old Jimmy Graham. And again, I just want to highlight the problem or the fact 
that I said that Jimmy Graham was not going to be good this year, and all of you, all of you got on my back about it. And when they can the red zone, Tom, the targets, Tommy's going to have double-digit touchdowns, and he didn't. He didn't. I just wanted you to know that. I wanted to point that out. Now, Jimmy Graham, there's been talks, and by talks, I mean there's been internet fodder out there. Fodder, great word. That Jimmy Graham's going to get cut. Eh, eh, whatever. That's that's what kind of it is for me, Jimmy Graham. I think if you keep him one more year to see if he has kind of a bounce back, you know, he did break his 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 finger, his thumb, right? So maybe maybe it was just a a problem with with that. It wasn't, but let's just give him the benefit of the doubt. Maybe he'll have a year to bounce back to go back to good old New Orleans, Jimmy Graham. It will never happen, but you know, maybe maybe. Uh, or if you cut him this year, I honestly don't care. I don't care in any way, shape, or form. What I do care about is I don't want to venture out into the free agency waters and just try to pull in a big fish and be like, hey, Tom, what about Jared Cook? You know, he's been having a great year ever since we let him go. I know. I've been watching. But that being said, Jared Cook, even though he was injured the season that we, we had him, you know, he wasn't that great either. If anything, I'm pretty sure Jimmy Graham, like, doubled the amount of yards that he had. Uh, I know he was injured, but we all remember him from that big divisional catch against the Cowboys and bless his soul. That was a beautiful thing, but I don't want to go get another free agent tight end. I'm tired of taking band-aids and putting it on an amputated arm. It doesn't work anymore. I'm gushing out. I am bleeding all over the floor and it's a new carpet and I'm freaking freaking tired of putting band-aids on it. So yeah, uh, I want to, I want to draft one. That'd be good. There's rumors that, you know, maybe we'll, we'll pick him up with the Saints pick, you know, down at down number uh, 30. I wouldn't mind that. I think that would be get good at get good old Aaron Rodgers a good weapon to throw to for once, you know, instead of this stuff that we have. So, yeah, tight end at number four. Speaking of Aaron Rodgers, uh, let's talk about our offensive line. Now we have a pretty good offensive line. Of course, we got good old David Bakhtiari, my man, the myth the legend, the Bach. Uh, and we, we, got, we got some good guards and, and all that stuff. The problem with the offensive line and why they're at number three is because, one, they protect the guy that we're paying over $100 million to. But more importantly is that they're always injured. Always. They walk out to go pick up their newspaper and they fall and break their collarbone or tailbone or all the bones. And someone, someone's all, every single season, it, we're at week six, and there's like, there hasn't been the same offensive line starting since week one. Every single, every single season. It always happens. Someone gets hurt. So let's, let's, let's invest a little bit, right? Let's invest maybe like a second rounder, maybe even a third rounder, right? And let's get, let's get some guy there to protect the asset in the back, Mr. Aaron Rodgers. So I think we need to address offensive line. We definitely need the depth because when they're healthy, they're pretty darn good. But they're never healthy. So because of that, they're never pretty darn good. Number dos. That's two for our Spanish-speaking friends. I'm sorry about my comment earlier. Spanish people, I haven't forgotten about you. I still love you. Mi amor. Spanish, right? I think. Or is that? Yeah, more would be Italian. Moving on. Yeah, number two. And that's good old safety. Yep, that's right. Because our safety crew is... <laughs> A fiery car wreck. Uh, right now, we got good old Bryce Campbell. We got Raven Green, who looked good on a couple of plays. Uh, Josh Jones and Eddie Pleasant. And this safety crew is anything but pleasant. See what I did there? And I know, you know, moving Tremont Williams over to safety, you know, again, that's another Band-Aid. Not, not going to help anything. Uh, people are talking about moving Josh Jackson over to safety. I don't know if they're even going to do that. What I would like is actually to draft someone in the safety position with one of our earlier picks. Now, that doesn't mean I want to draft a safety at 12. I don't. I really, really don't. Put at the end of the first round, Do put it in the second round, third round, fine. Because we're going to talk about who I really want, and you already know, if I haven't mentioned it now, who I want. But, uh, yeah, we really need help at the safety position. Just there, there's, there's nobody playing back there. When Kentrell Bryce is like your leading safety. I'm sorry, Kentrell, I like you, but not like that. Uh, and Josh Jones has been disappointing after his first year, and I was like, oh, he's got some potential, and then... 
uh, it didn't work out anymore. So, I, I mean, Raven Green, maybe. But again, he's... Uh, I need to see a lot more of that guy for uh, me to actually be a believer in him. So we really need to draft a, a safety, please, for the love of God, to sure up that backfield. Considering that, you know, we got Jair Alexander, we got our, we got our corner, who is going to do even better in our sophomore year. Hopefully, you know, you got Josh Jackson, who's going to take a couple steps and, and be able to sure up that other side with the cornerback. But, uh, yeah, we need some help with safety. And uh, we definitely need to start drafting. Or, even better... Sign a free agent. Hey, Goot, I'm talking to you, bud. You. You should sign one. There's plenty of them. I, I did a whole episode on them of, like, the top eight safeties if you want. You can check it out. Yeah, it's YouTube.com slash Tom Grassi Comedy. Yeah, it's, it's there. Yeah, you just, just, you just type it in. Yep, podcast, Tom Grassi. You'll find it. You'll find it, Goot. You'll find it. You'll find it. Yeah, please. Can we sign a good, like, Landon Collins? Let's do it. Let's, let's do it. Please, for the love of God. Please, just give me a safety. And number one. Which, by the way, I was looking back in my notes. I don't know where it is. Uh, back last year when I did this thing, and I'm pretty sure this was number one, and it's going to be number one again. And that is a pass freaking rusher. Yeah, the thing that's been at the top of my to-do list, oh, I don't know, since ever, since I've been born, is to get a pass rusher on this team. Clay Matthews, most likely not going to be on this team next year. I'm okay with it. It is what it is. So it goes. Thanks, Clay. Love your hair. I hope Pantene pays you lots of money for hair product commercials. But uh, we don't have a pass rusher. Who knows what's happening with Wilkerson? People have been asking, hey, Tom, are we going to resign Muhammad Wilkerson? I don't know. He played like three games, and he didn't really do much in those three games, and then he got injured. So I don't even think he's a long-term effect. Dean Lowry, pff, who the hell knows about that either? Again, we need a pass rusher. That's who we should be going for at number 12. Give me a big, mean, fighting machine. That's what I want. I swear to God, if we draft anybody else except a pass rusher at 12, I'm going to lose my mind because I am so out of patience because I'm not a doctor. <laughs> I made a joke again, but what I'm not joking about is seriously, we need to draft a pass rusher. Hell, do it twice in the first round. We are, it's pretty defensive heavy in this draft. Draft all the pass rushers. I don't care. Start throwing bricks at the quarterback. I don't care. I want somebody who can get to the quarterback. And some of you will be like, hey, but what about Kyler Fackrell? Give me another season of that, Sackrell, and then we'll talk. Considering the majority of his sacks came from just two games, being the Seahawks game and the Bills game, I want more. Please, for the love of God, give me someone who can rush the quarterback. Clay Matthews, we moved him back to OLB. We moved him back to the outside. And they're like, oh, he's going to get them sacks now. And that didn't happen. Didn't happen. Three and a half sacks, people. Three and a half. We need a pass rusher. And, uh, and this is the number one spot that I think is most needed. Because if we get a really good pass rusher, that is going to fix a majority of our backfield problems. Because if you have a good pass rush, your secondary could be lacking a little bit. So, you know, that's 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 good. That's what I want. So I want to be heavy up front. You got, you got your, your beautiful Mike Daniels. You got your beautiful Kenny Clark, you know, stopping the run every now and then, getting to the quarterback. Kyler Fackrell could do stuff every now and then. But I want, I want a pass rusher whose job is literally to eat the quarterback. Yes, cannibalism. Actually, go into one of these like Amazon rainforest places, go find someone, a big guy preferably, or it could be a skinny guy. I'm not one to judge athletic ability based off of your weight. And I want you to find someone who eats people, who is a literal cannibal. No, 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 no. I'm not talking about like, haha, Tom, he's funny. No, I want someone who is going to eat human flesh and you don't feed them, right? You don't feed them for a while. You, you pay them in like beef jerky, Right, and that's it. And you're like, hey, you only get this beef jerky if you get three sacks a game, right? And then every now and then he's gonna get more hungry, more hungry, more hungry. And yeah, you know what? Someone's probably gonna get bit, but at least someone will get to the quarterback on the damn defense. So yeah, I want a pass rusher. That's uh, that's the Packers' number one need. Uh, if that wasn't clear, but let me know what you think down below if you agree with this list. Uh, yeah, and uh, we'll talk. We'll talk. You can always find me at TomGrassyComedy.com, T-O-M-G-R-O-S-S-I Comedy, or at Comedy on all the social medias, including Patreon and podcasts on SoundCloud, iTunes, and Google Play Music, and of course here on YouTube multiple times per week. 
But we'll be streaming the Super Bowl on Sunday, too. So, you know, come down for that. But thank you so much for watching. I'm Tom Grassi. And as always, Go Pack Go! Mm-hmm.